Hello to everyone in the Commodore Los Angeles Super Show. I'm Roger Van Pelt for the Fresno Commodore Users Group. Today I have a demonstration of Morse code and radio teletype decoding into text using vintage hardware on the decoding side. First some background. Back in the 1980s, amateur radio operators were developing ways to use microcomputers such as the Commodore 64 or 128 to enhance their hobby. One of the ways they applied computers was to use them to decode various kinds of encoded information transmitted by shortwave radio, shortwave being frequencies between 3.3 and 30 megahertz. Today I'll demonstrate decoding of two modes of encoded transmissions, Morse code, also called CW for continuous wave. For this, I'll be using a Commodore 128 running a terminal emulator program, i.e. Novaterm 9.6, and a Cantronics all-mode terminal node controller, which is a device for sending and receiving data via computer over shortwave radio. The connection to the computer is through a VIC 1011A RS-232 interface. I'm also using an SD to IEC mass storage device uh, and an EPIX fast load cartridge in the back uh, to speed the loading of the terminal program. In place of a radio, I'm using a laptop and internet connection to remote radio stations equipped with software-defined radio, uh, which have been set up by their operators to allow visitors to listen and tune them to their locally received radio signals. The audio is streamed over the internet. Uh, this will be our source for live signals. First we'll decode Morse code from radio station W1AW in Connecticut. Okay, so now I'm going to go into Novaterm here. It's in 40 column mode. And I have to tune the radio modem here, the terminal node controller. First we'll Turn on the audio, which is muted. Okay. Now I have to tune the web SDR site, software defined radio, so that the frequencies that you hear are what this is capable of receiving at the moment. Let's see. And I'll go into command mode and set it to receive uh, Morse code. They are now receiving. This is Morse code practice from W1AW. They're sending it slowly so that uh, operators can practice their Morse code. The E's that you see are noise in between the transmitted characters. And uh, there's some latency in this laptop here. Sounds like they're sending about five words a minute, which is standard for um, slow Morse code practice. They send it at different speeds, um, and 30 words a minute is uh, what, you're, what you normally hear for normal um, copying of Morse code by ear although it can be faster. So I switched to another transmission here. This is between two hams live, um, and they're talking to each other. One of them is named Terry. 73, that means best wishes, best regards.
Okay, he's just ended uh, his transmission there. SK, stop keying. So they're saying goodbye to each other. <laughs> uh, so let's see. Let's try another one over here. I can clear the screen of the whole message. sending uh, signal reception information, it looks like, although it's not tuned in very well to the TNC. Um, we're on another transmission here on uh, the 40 meter band um, ham radio. And he says, thanks. Uh, I'm supposed to be 73. <laughs> 73. That means best wishes. KC8B from WA2Q. someone else responding to him. I'll try to tune it a little better. He's starting a new transmission here from W1AW. a few times, they should get into uh, the context of the transmission. calls, distance reception, Newington, Connecticut. This is from the Amateur Radio Relay League's headquarters in Newington, Connecticut. made possible with the information
divided by AA3B, KK9A, those are amateur radio stations. So this is a bulletin regarding uh, amateur radio contests going on, apparently. And we're on another transmission here. Okay, they're saying that uh, the activity for um, the radio transmissions are going to be on 40 meters and 10 meters uh, on amateur radio bands. Um, when I decided to look for a radio modem for my Commodores, I uh, was originally looking for a cartridge called the Microlog SWL cartridge for the Commodore 64. And I couldn't find one on eBay or, or any of the other auction sites. So I decided to look for something else and I found uh, this Cantronics KAM for CAM All Mode. Uh, radio modem is called a terminal node controller and uh, it's actually a packet radio modem as well and it does um, CW and RIDI translation as well but uh, interesting thing about it is um, when I needed to make the cables to connect to the back here I needed the pinouts and I was able to call up Cantronics and talk to someone who had worked on these back in the 80s and he was able to tell me um, everything I needed to know about it, the pin numbers uh, that I needed to connect to to um, input the audio and he even told me that there were two capacitors that I had to watch out for on the circuit board that tended to go out on these because he remembered working on these back in the 80s and 90s. And I thought that was pretty amazing. Um, and so he gave me precise information I needed to get it going without burning anything out. That was very good. Okay, and I thought I'd give an explanation of uh, what you see on the front of the unit here. Okay, the LEDs in the front of the cam uh, are the bar graph which uh, gives an indication of the signal being received. And the bottom LEDs uh, 
are for transmit, receive, and connection functions. Um, we are operating in packet radio mode. Uh, the CAM is also a, a packet radio modem. Uh, it's like a landline modem, except that it uses a radio to send and receive data packets between operators who have packet radio modems and computers running packet communication software. So the interesting thing about the case that this comes in is that it's a single piece of extruded aluminum and you have to remove these two screws in the front and take the front off and then another screw um, which is attached to a component of the circuit board and the entire PCB just slides out and you have complete access to it. Um, so the case provides a giant heat sink for the PCB. Um, you don't see boxes like this for electronics too often. I thought I'd give an explanation of the commands to control the terminal node controller. Uh, first we'll turn it on here. And it brings up the command prompt down here. Um, so here we can enter commands that we need to uh, set up to the different modes. Okay, so to have it decode Morse code, you would type in CW, and then the words per minute, which can be, uh, say, 25 is the default. CW 25. Um, and to get back into the command prompt mode, you go control C X. And let's see, to go into radio mode, radio teletype, you type R T T Y. And you can type in the baud rate, which can be 45 to 300 baud. Uh, 45 is the default, and that's about 60 words per minute. Or um, you can adjust the settings here. Say you want uh, on a TTY at uh, higher baud rate, 300 baud, let's say. Type that in. Now you're at 300 baud, which is pretty fast. Um, let's see, control C, X. And you can also adjust the parameters of the modem. Uh, say you want to um, adjust the modem tones, you can use low or high tones. Low, on. It was off. And uh, they use a lower set of tones for European really transmissions than we do here in the US. Let's see. Low off. Back to the US default high tones as they call them. And uh, let's see. Display commands. Well, you can show what the uh, default settings are here. So uh, type in DSP for display, and uh, let's type in X, and this shows the current settings um, of the modem related to uh, RIDI and uh, digital modes, so Antor for instance, uh, it shows your um, space and mark tones. The mark, I think, is up here a bit higher. Those are the, the two tones used by radio teletype. Um, and you can change the frequencies of those if you want. Let's see. Let's show another setting here. Okay, those are the terminal interface settings, among other things. Uh, you can go 
up to 9600 baud. Right now it's set to 2400 baud um, because that's the maximum that you can do with the VIC 1011A here that I've got. Uh, you have to set a couple of jumpers in here um, to uh, um, change the baud rate internally. Well, these days, decoding of Morse code and radio teletype can be done using software. However, I thought it would be fun to have a look at the vintage way of doing it and give you a brief peek into the world of digital mode decoding on shortwave radio. Uh, thanks, and have fun at the Commodore Los Angeles Super Show. This is Roger Van Pelt from the Fresno Commodore Users Group. Best wishes and 73, as amateur radio operators would say. The Commodore Los Angeles Super Show.